All right. So again, description panel. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. We're taking a look at this H5P editor in the center. And I'm pretty excited about this because the, you can search for content types. But you can also just explore. Just scroll down here and look at the different content types that are available to you and see if something interests you. All right. You can look at it from A to Z. I want to do one, I want to do drag and drop the words. All right. Uh, if you're not sure what these things mean, you can click here on the details and get some more information. So here, drag and drop the world. words allows you to create textual expressions, expressions with missing pieces of text. And the end user will drag the text over. And if I'm interested in that one, I can look at a demonstration. And here's one. Blueberries are blue. Blueberries are blue. Strawberries are red. Are you still seeing this, Mr. Marco? Cloudberries are orange. Yes, and I believe you have three correct answers. I hope so. Yay! Finally, one I got right. So we can take a look at an example and see what that's like. And when I decide to use that, I can just click on this Use button here. And now it's going to take me through how to create this. I can go back and look at the example again. Or if I need help, I have a really fantastic detailed tutorial that will take me step by step through how to create this. So here's the tutorial. Like literally takes you exactly through what you need to do to make this, which I think is fabulous. But let me take you through it. The first thing that I do when I'm in the H5P editor and I have selected the content type that I want to make, the first thing I do is I give it a title. And this one, oops, I'm getting my text file here. I'm going to make this one about typical student services. That's the title of my exercise. The next thing I do is come in here to metadata. In met metadata is where I choose my license, and I'm going to make this uh, CC BY attribution. And you'll see it automatically captures my author's name in the metadata but I have to physically go into the metadata to set my license. I'm going to go ahead and save my metadata, and I'm, I'm done with that. So the next thing is task description. So here's where we'll describe how the user is going to solve the task. They need to drag the words into the correct boxes. The next thing I have to do is I have to add some text information in here that's going to make up my exercise. And I have that saved, so I'm going to copy and paste that over. I come in here, and I have a couple of different things. I've got accessibility services. I can make this bigger. There we go. Counselors, Indigenous services, library center, and tutoring services. And maybe I'll just make a little change there and make that a capital. I can copy and paste this information in. And then the only other thing I have to do to make this exercise work is I have to put asterisks, hate that word, in front or on either side of whatever text I want to have as the draggable portion. So what I've done is taken the titles of these different services and put an asterisk on either side. That, extra, that piece of my um, exercise is done. Now I can come back here or come down to the bottom and I can give some feedback. What is it going to say as students do this exercise and check? Now I've got five different exercises so I think I'm going to add a range. If they get three out of five I'm going to say please review the article on student services. Give them a tip. If they get over three right, I'm going to say, good job. 
my feedback section. I can then look at my behavior section. Um, I do want to give them an, the ability to retry. I do want to have the show button, but I don't want to do instant feedback. I don't want them to, because then they could just drag it over and to put it to each slot until they get one right. Um, I like this idea of the retry, and I like the show solution button. Okay. Um, I want to allow others to download the content in case they want to make some changes. I want to be able to give people the right to embed, and I want to embed, so I'm going to have the embed button at the bottom, and I'm going to have the copyright button at the bottom. So that's it. I've created this. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But I first have to fill out this description section. I'm going to give it the same title, Typical Student Services. I put my student services type stuff under reference. Um, drag and drop the names of the student services departments with the right description. There we go. I don't use to do keywords. I want to talk about this little bottom piece here for a minute. Let's say you wanted to create something, but for whatever reason, you didn't want to share it and you don't want to have it show up in the catalog. OK, that's fair. That's your choice. You can create this as and leave it as a work in progress. If it's a work in progress, you can still embed it, but nobody else will see it. So if you're concerned that there is some, some you don't want to share this because it's very complicated or uses diagrams, that's, that's okay. That's up to you. You can do that. You can use H5P and do that. Just leave your work as a work in progress. And no one else will ever see it, but you can still embed it into your Blackboard. That's pretty awesome. If you are willing to have it be public, you would ha instead take it off work in progress. You would have it show in your catalog, and you may also want it to show in your profile of the work that you have completed. And I'm fine with showing it in the catalog. I'm going to now save it. And here is my drag and drop. And as you can see, it's ready to embed. And let's see. I'm just going to put them anywhere. I know they got at least two wrong. And we can do an immediate check. And we have a drag and drop explanation that we can use. I'm going to come back. Are there any questions in the chat room that I should be looking at, Marco? If you could just give us a little overview detail, would I be able to tell who accessed this um, drag and drop quiz, how they did, what kind of statistics would I have access to, how would I do it if I've done this in H5P and then embedded it in my a Blackboard course? If you embed it in Blackboard, you can then put statistics tracking on it and use the same way that you would track anything else that you would post in Blackboard. So that, that part does not change, OK? But you can't track who uses through H5P Studio. The H5P Studio is where you create items, where you share items, and where your original lives. OK, once we bring it into Blackboard, we have all the tools that Blackboard would have with the exception of we can't link it into our gradebook. So so it's it's not meant to take the place of a quiz. It's more uh, an exercise, a practice quiz, uh, a way for students to confirm their learning. That's, that's more the purpose of it. It's much a, it's a, a lighter level. It's not really an assessment piece other than a self-check piece for your student. Can you do retry? Sure. Here we go. Brings it back to the beginning. And you can continue.
Irene, when you retry, does it reorder the questions so I can't remember the that the long word went in the first slot, the shortest word went in the last slot. Th did it change the order in which the questions are uh, I don't know. Let's see. It was accessibility services, tutoring, library, counselors, and indigenous. That's where it was. Let's do it again, and then we'll change it. And let's see if it came back the same. Oh, now indigenous service. So it does change the order every time you reload it. That's excellent. So that I can't rely on some crude memory device. I really do have to read the question and think about it. Right. So this is actually uh, one of the um, sample, one of the exercises I have in Thrives in the successful students ask for help section. So let me come back to you here. Would you? Are you ready for a different one? Do another one. Let's do it. All right. So I'm done with this one. Now, let's say I found a spelling mistake in here. I just want to mention, I can come up here to edit and make any changes I need to this exercise. OK, so just because I saved it doesn't mean I can't come back. So let's go back to create. And I want to do, I think I want to do the quotes. Hang on, I, I pressed something I shouldn't have. Oops. Oh, are we OK? Irene, I just wanted right, to mention ahead. that uh, We've had requests for hotspot multiple, if that's one of the possible choices for your next uh, exploration. Yeah. No, that one's a hard one. I'm not doing that one. <laughs> no, I can't say it's hard. Um, there are some that are more complicated than others. And if it's OK, I'd like to be able to show people some of the really simple ones this time. And if we have a group of people that are interested in more advanced ones, I'm happy to, to we could do like an H5P2 session and do the more advanced ones. But I'd really like to focus on some of the, the simpler ones that I think anybody could do, if that's OK. Irene, so I guess the short answer is no. Just backing up one question from Kathy. I noticed sure. you can create a course presentation. Can you put slides with exercises within your PowerPoint on this? I believe you mentioned this earlier. Yes, yes, that is one of the things you can do. However, you cannot import your PowerPoint slides into this. You have to actually start from scratch and make each individual slides. And it does not work like PowerPoint does. So it's kind of frustrating that way. But you can make a really fabulous um, course presentation using slides and having exercises embedded in there. So I'd like to show you question set because I think this is a, a, another one. Uh, this is one that I use for key takeaways, for example. So again, I'm going to give this a title. And this one is about the benefits of diversity. And I'm going to put the title over here as well. I'm going to set my metadata to make it attribution CC by, and I am going a little bit quicker this time. And in this case, you could add a background image. I'm not going to in this case. Um, I'm going to have dots to show that there is more than one question across the bottom of the exercise. And then I come to this area here where I can start adding questions. And I'm going to add a true false question. I'm not going to give this one a title. I am simply going to copy and paste over my statement. So my statement is multiculturalism involves accepting and respecting feelings, behaviors, ideas, and experiences of others, and that one is true. Now I'm going to add another question. This is also going to be a true and false question. I call these my three truths and a lie. And I'm going to copy over my next statement. Experiencing diversity at college prepares you for the diversity you will encounter for the rest of your life. And that is also true. I'm going to add my next question, or my next statement, rather. It is also a true and false question. And my statement is experiencing on diversity on campus is only beneficial for students who are part of, my, of a minority. That's my false one. I'm going to add one more statement, also a true false. 
And this statement is, we gain insights into our own thought processes, life experiences, and values as we learn from people whose background and experiences are different than our own. That is true. That's my question set. I'm done with that part. Now I can look at my options. Um, I would like to randomize the questions so that they come up in a different order every time. I could uh, choose just some of the statements instead of all of them. I could disable backward navigation, but given that these are practice tests and these are for reflection and confirmation, I don't need to do any of those things. I do want uh, um, to have the check there. Um, I don't want to override the show solution button or I don't want to override the retry button, but I could. Yeah, does, I want to keep this disabled so that they check it at the end. Uh, there's no text overrides I need to do. I want display buttons, users to download embed copyright. I've given it a title. I just need to choose the subject area, which is going to be reference. I'm going to give it a description. Ugh. I'm going to show in the catalog and show in my profile. I'm not going to make it a work in progress. And when I hit save, I have created a question set. You get the statements. You choose whether or not they are true and false. Oh dear. I think it's checking each individual one. And I didn't want it to do that. I want to check it at the, oh, it does give me a result at the end. We're coming up to the end of time, so I'm going to skip the next one I wanted to show you. You can see that some of these are really quite easy to do. It's simply taking some text that you probably already have and copying it over into the framework of the H5P editor and then creating something new with it. I'd like to show you how I embed it. Oh, you want to see if it will appear in the catalog? Let me go back there. So if you look now, you can see typical students, services, and benefits of diversity now show up in the catalog of H5P. When I go to my dashboard, it also shows up as questions that I have created. Okay. I want to give, a, now that we're in what I have created, I'm going to just skip to skip a piece and then I'll come back to how to embed but I want to show you a couple of the other ones that I have created. You may have in the past seen the college, the St. Clair Way video. Uh, it's often shown at orientation. It is a 10 minute video that is available on YouTube. I have taken that video and I have in added a number of H5P exercises to the video so that as students in Thrives are watching the video, the video is broken up into smaller pieces with these exercises all the way through. Uh, I think it makes a 10 minute video more engaging to watch. Uh, I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. The other thing I have done, and this is something you can even grab and throw into your Blackboard courses if you want to, uh, this is the Thrive's IT help files. So I have taken all the important pieces of the software and utilities, and I have given a brief ex explanation of what each one of these things are, as well as a link to the help files that are available through our website for St. Clair One, OneCard, my St. Clair, your college email, uh, SIS, Blackboard, etc. And this is in the accordion style. And you can grab that and embed that into your uh, Blackboard course if you like. The other thing that I created was um, this label the parts of a Blackboard Collaborate window. So here I took an image and I created different areas where you can drag and drop those, those, if you remember, if you did take a look at 
the PDF document that I sent you, I had a, uh, a number of instructions about how to use Blackboard Collaborate, and this image was one of the things that was in that um, PDF. I'd like to show you how I would embed this into my Thrives course. Um, I heard a hand come up. Is there a question? Kirsten, did you have a question? Yeah, hi, I mean, um, I don't think you've been there yet, how to embed, uh, you're going to show us how to embed those uh, again? Yes, if yes, I'm going to show that you now. Yeah, and then I so have gonna... one other question, uh, sorry. Sure. So the, the students don't actually have to have access to the, uh, um, like, be signed on to the eCampus H5 no. Studio, like, if they embed, um, like, let's say I really like what you just showed just before this was all the help links, and you already did, did all the work. So if I wanted to use that, like you said, I could go in there and embed it, and then the students could actually get the links without doing anything right. else. They, they, they don't have to go anywhere. They're going to see it right in your Blackboard course. So so let wow. me show you what that, that, that looks like. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to come back here, just uh, I'm going to move away from that window. So what I want to do, I'm in this label the parts of a Blackboard Collaborate window, and I want to embed this in my Blackboard course. So I'm going to come down here to where it says embed, and I'm going to copy, control C, that embed code. Then I'm going to come over here to Blackboard. And I'm going to go into my Thrives course. This is my test Thrives course. Some of you might have access to this. All right. Uh, and I want to say a word about Thrives in just a minute. But I wanted to go down here in my instructions for collaborate meetings. OK. Now, I created a PDF for you. And I included that in the email that I sent to everybody. But I don't have it as a PDF for my students in Thrives, I have it this way, where they come into my this area uh, of Thrives, and they read everything right here on the screen. So there's my instructions for the Collaborate panel, for participating in Collaborate meetings, participating in a poll. Um, here's the video that's been embedded. Uh, here's that second video where I have links for you. Um, I have them embedded right in here. They stay right in this module from beginning to end. So here's the section where I have the uh, exercise. I actually might put the exercise down here as a separate item. So let's do that. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling a little bit too much. Okay. So this is the uh, the content area that I would like to have a uh, exercise in. I'm going to come here to build content, click on item. I'm going to call this a self-check exercise. Helps if I could spell. Um, at this point, what I do is I go, um, I go into HTML code view. Oh dear, it didn't copy. That's all right. I'll come back here and do it again. Oops. Control C. There it goes. And I have copied my iframe that was generated in H5P. When I click Update, I see the yellow magic box that says there's something there. When I hit Submit, and I go down to the bottom, here is my Label the Blackboard exercise. Oops, I'm not grabbing it. It's all right there, and the student can use it. 
and I can then move that anywhere I want. I would probably put it above the Blackboard Collaborate video window. So I can come in here and order that to where I want, and move it up to, and I hit Submit. I just find it really easy to come in here into HTML and paste it in. I think uh, one other thing I'd just like to, to quickly show you, if you don't mind, this is our, our, our Thrives course, and we have uh, information in a number of different topics around what successful students do, like successful students have goals, take responsibility, go to class, for example. And um, what we've done is within each of these sections, we have included, so for example, here's your going to class self-check. So what we've tried to done is have you know, a variety of things. We have uh, some audio here. Uh, then some text with a uh, self-check. And then we might have a video, um, and uh, maybe two videos, and then another self-check to break up and chunk this information into uh, more reasonable pieces and to keep students' attention right to the end. And then we have another self-check. And then we have our, our quiz and some other things at the end. Um, so I wanted to show you that's the model that we use for Thrives or that I use for Thrives. Okay. Um, so have I missed questions? Yes, there have been several, and I'd like to take you through them very quickly. Okay. Please um, do. Yes. So uh, participant Paul, can you download your HTML files to a local drive, or, they, or will they only work to embed if on H5P Studio? Yes, in order to embed them, they have to live somewhere. They have to be um, uh, held on a server. Uh, so that's one of the functions that H5P Studio is doing for us through eCampus Ontario is it's giving us a server. Someone else said that they had earlier, I think, that they had downloaded the, try to download an H5P um, um, file and they couldn't open it. Um, you have to either be able to, uh, you have to have a place where it will work. So you either have to open it with uh, something that will read HTML5 files, or you have to copy it into a blank H5, H5P um, um, exercise creator, like H5P Studio or um, H5P.org. Is there another question that I missed? Uh, yes. Uh, participant Crystal asks, can you quickly show the area where to find the link to embed on the H5P site again? Sure. Let me show you that one more time because to me, if, uh, you know, if you want to get started with this right now, the easiest thing to do is to take a look at what's already available and if it's Creative Commons license, use it. Okay. It's a way of adding something right now today to your Blackboard courses, excuse me. So here I am in my example of label the parts of a Blackboard Collaborate window. In order to find the embed code, I come right here to the bottom, it's right there. It'll always be on the left, one of the items available on the left hand side. If you're able to embed it, the little code will show up here. I click on that and I copy and paste that iframe statement and paste it into the HTML section of an item in Blackboard. Are there any other questions, Marco, that I missed? Yes, participant Amanda asked, what option on H5P is this model you are using with text and self-checks? OK, Amanda, you might need to give me some more information. OK. Also, uh, participant Terry has said, also, what icon to click to upload the H5P file in Blackboard? I missed it first time around. That may be something okay. just. OK. So um, I think what Ter Terry might have been referring to is this idea of you don't really have to upload the file into Blackboard. You need to 
copy and paste that embed code into an item. That's what uploads it. Okay. Um, what option? So with the text and the self-check, uh, I think Amanda might have been referring to uh, what type of exercise? Yes, she's added now some additional information from your oh, blog. So you, sorry. How you did you get your layout? Um, I, I made it. I, um, so where they could read. So let me see if I can try and go back there for just a minute. So this is successful students go to class. OK, so what I've done here, let's just take this example. If I go to edit this item, so what I basically did was I took the text, and I think I may have mentioned that there is a, a, a Aaron Mason Bill and I created, modified an existing open education textbook, and we remixed it to be the textbook for this course. And because it is Creative Commons licensed under a share alike license, I am free to copy the entire textbook and put it into Blackboard, which is essentially what I did for Thrives. So instead of asking the student to read something, to go to a textbook and read it, they do everything within this Blackboard site. Their readings and everything are right here. Um, and so this is one of the articles, if you will, or part of the chapter about successful students going to class. So I copied this right into it. And then at the bottom here, so this is what the HTML looks like. So here's all the information from the text. And then at the bottom, I gave it a title here. And I just copy and paste, copy, copied and pasted the iframe right into this section so that it would show where I wanted it to within this particular article. And I hope that answered your question. And if it didn't, then please uh, do some, give me some more information and I will answer more questions. Uh, have a, is there any other questions I've missed, Marco? Yes, Irene, uh, participant Crystal also asked, is there a library of images that can be used freely? Could we have some details of that? So yes, there's a couple of different places that I recommend that you go. Let me make sure I'm in and you can still see me. I will need to get back to this. Episode. So uh, one of my favorite places to get images that are Creative Commons licensed is Unsplash. So unsplash.com, they have some beautiful images here. You can, I, I use it all the time. So let's look at college students, OK? And there are all kinds of great pictures that I can use for college students. Maybe you'll, I've used this one before. Maybe you find one that you like. And uh, now this has a Creative Commons Zero license where you do not have to give attribution if you use it, but it is recommended. So here's a beautiful image. If I want to download this, because I also want to be concerned about internet speeds and those kinds of things if I want to use it in Blackboard, I would probably download it as a small image. And when I'm finished downloading that, I have the option here to say thanks by simply copying the photo by Mimi fan on Unsplash and adding that. And often what I'll do is I'll just paste that at underneath the image in Blackboard that I use. OK, as a, to give it some attribution. The other one I recommend is Photos for Class. Yeah, www.photosforclass.com. You can also search there for just about anything. And one of the nice things about this is when you download this image, let's see if it'll open up, it includes the attribution state, statement for you automatically as part of the image so that you just can then now um, uh, upload or save or put that image in your Blackboard course or on your PowerPoint slide or in your PDF or as part of your H5P exercise. OK, so Jess said, can you please repeat the part about accessing the text readings? How isn't this a copyright issue? 
Okay, I'm glad you asked, and I, I will demonstrate for you why in, in my particular case it is not a copyright issue, okay? Um, th this is the Thrives course. The textbook that we use for Thrives is a guide for successful students, which is copyrighted, attribution, non-commercial, share alike. And it is modified from college success, the University of Minnesota. So Erin uh, and I took what we wanted from college success, reworked it completely into a new format, published it under a share alike license as a guide for student success. And because it has this license, where I am free to modify and use it, I was able to then take what we have prepared from the guide for successful students here. And you can read the book right online. And you can go to the section on successful students go to class. And within there, there's even my H5P exercises are part of the textbook. I can take what I had created there and put it directly into my Blackboard course, and I'm not violating any copyright law. Now, that does not mean that if you have a, a copyrighted textbook, you can't do the same thing. And once again, I'll mention the idea is I really encourage you to take a look at the Open Library for eCampus Ontario and see if there is some open education resource materials that would be appropriate for your course, and if it's under an appropriate li uh, um, license, then you could include some of the readings like I have directly into Blackboard. We're, we're coming up to the, the almost the end of our time. Are there any final questions before yes. we leave? Irene, um, back at 10, 17 a.m., participant Participant Barb said, why don't you have another session in a couple of weeks and we can share copies of what we have done and get help with problems that we have encountered? I actually left that to the end because I thought it was uh, of interest now that we're wrapping up. Will we have a part two? Will there be another um, offering of this kind of a workshop? Sure, I'm willing. Um... I'm going to be here most of the summer, so I'm happy to to do another workshop. We can ask Stephanie if it's something that we can set up through the Center for Academic Excellence. I don't think they're going to have a problem with the idea of faculty getting together and sharing ideas and uh, increasing our skills. Um, but I'm certainly willing. And Marco, if you're willing to come back and be my moderator, then I'll do it. Well, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, Irene. 